So we got a battle of tech titans, the richest man going after the richest company. Elon Musk and Apple, it's a good one too, tweeting, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? Uh, what's going on here? Where does it go? Vivek Ramaswamy, founder of Strive Asset Management, author of Nation of Victims, with me now. Vivek, good morning to you. Um, we were looking for a response from Apple. Haven't seen it yet. If it's out there, we'll try and get it and pass it to our viewers. Uh, what's Musk going for here, and where does it go? Look, I think he's calling out the hypocrisy of a company whose slogan was once quite literally, think different. Now the company will punish you unless you literally think the same. And I think, that, Bill, people might say that, oh, well, I don't want to use my iPhone then. I'm going to switch to an Android phone. Well, guess what? Google can make the exact same decision to deplatform an app like Twitter as it did with Parler. This is not theoretical. Both Apple and the Google Play Store did the exact same thing. And I think that this exposes, Bill, the real antitrust problem in Silicon Valley. It is not a monopoly on products. It is a monopoly on ideas. It is not this classical product cartel that punishes the consumer by charging them a high price. It is an ideological cartel that punishes the defector. And right now, that defector is Elon Musk. That's what we're seeing on display. Okay, he, he shot out another. He fired a bunch of these off yesterday. Apple has also threatened, he writes, to withhold Twitter from its app store, but won't tell us why. But if that's true, that's a big deal. That is a very big deal. It goes back to even the antitrust cases in the 1990s of Microsoft tying up Netscape as its browser. I think it's the same problem when you look at the anti-competitive issues with the Apple Play Store and the Google Play Store. This is a monopoly on ideas. But Bill, I think that this actually goes more deeply to our culture. What are our commitments to the free exchange of ideas? What are our actual cultural commitments to free speech and open debate? That is what's at stake here. And the real threat to free speech today in our country plays out not just through the government, that is half the problem, but through this hybrid of governmental power and corporate power, especially anti-competitive corporate power, to suppress free speech and open debate in this country. That is the essence of our national soul, and I think that is what's at stake in this debate. You know what I think is interesting, Vivek? You just follow your Twitter feed and see what Musk is doing every day ever since he bought the company. Uh, it's, it's a stunning thing to me to see how many people want to see him fail. Um, uh, it, it was not like that before on this platform. That to the side, Washington Post takes an entirely different angle on it. Elon Musk is harming free expression on Twitter, not protecting it. Uh, they write, those who believe in free expression should be fighting for clear and consistent policies along with transparent enforcement. Instead, Mr. Musk has brought chaos. Do you see it as chaos thus far, Vivek? I wouldn't characterize it as chaos, but if I have a criticism, I would actually go in the other direction, that a lot of Elon Musk's commentary to date hasn't been entirely consistent, where some of the things he said is that he doesn't want to see either the far right or the far left. He wants to serve the 80% of Americans who are in the middle. I personally think that nobody should be making central determinations of truth, central determinations of what viewpoints do and don't get expressed. I don't think political discrimination should have a place on Twitter at all. Viewpoint-based discrimination of any kind, you should give that power back to the user to decide what they do and don't get to see. So if anything, I think Elon Musk is doing a great job in driving the ball forward. Okay. I would encourage him to stay even more true to the true North Star of operating this as a free speech oh, platform yeah. rather than just applying politically centrist principles but, to kinds of he, moderation. He so said anything, he my, would, my, my critique would be different. He said he would, sorry about interrupting you. He said he would release the algorithm. He hasn't done that yet. I don't know if it's going to happen either. Uh, one more thing he shut out yesterday. The Twitter files on free speech suppression soon to be published on Twitter itself. The public deserves to know what really happened. That would be a story, Vivek, if it happens. Last answer there. I think it would be worthy. At the end of the day, give the public transparency as to how these decisions have been made over the last couple of years. I personally think that is what the media is actually most frightened of, is exposing the way in which government, classical media, and social media conspired. And I think that is exactly what happened over the last couple of years to suppress information. I say, let's disinfect that with sunlight. That's going to be a good thing for American okay. democracy. I mean, he said himself, you know, free speech is not just the speech that you like. It is all speech from people you don't like, perhaps. Vivek, thank you for your time, and we'll see what comes this way today. Nice to see you. Dana. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.